Hey everyone, I have received a Milwaukee nut gun or buck wrench from the customer and customer tried to change the armature itself and told that the tool is not working with the new armature and I can see that it was something touching here and I have strange feeling that this one is not good and of course, when I see the whole detectors, I can suspect that they were touched by the armature. So I will open it and check if the field is installed correctly. Okay, let's open it. Check it. And remove the field. And just okay, see the lot of dirt here. We'll spray them, spray the board with the contact cleaner, and I'll just clean it. Why? Maybe I will see for some places where the armature was touching the field or something. Okay, what can we do now? We can check if the armature can be spin up around. Yeah, the armature can be spin up around and we can see that the arm will want to start to move. So I need to find the battery. Okay, I have a fully charged 6 amp battery. Yep, and it's just trying to start and doing nothing. And basically, I think it can be the whole sense of problem here. Yeah, I can see that the, yeah, the light is working for the modes. Yeah, as you can see, probably we have damaged the whole sensor because they were touched by the armature. So I will try to find the donor for this one. We have disassembled it again, and uh, this one can go. Of course, we have a lot of dust here, and I will try to search for some damage on the wiring, but I think it's a uh, whole sensor. Okay, now I need to unscrew these small screws. As you can see this one was touched by the field, I will try to show it like that. Sorry, not the field, the armature. And yeah, I think some of them can not work. So I need to probably clean this one and try to test the cold sensors. And what I have done, uh, I have reset the hull sensor. This is this small black sensors. Sensors, it's three of them. Now I will tighten. I have spin the armature a little bit inside, and it worked. So I will assemble the tool and check. And remember, you don't need to clean all the tool until you don't know that it's fully working because you will clean it, spend your time and it will not work, it's a waste of time.
and basically I think it's better to test it and then reassemble, assemble it and of course clean it. Okay. What we need to do now, we need to insert a switch I think. Okay, I will connect the <coughs> hammer housing. Basically, you can see that the wires are going here and here. And, oops, almost not lost them. Parts from the hammer housing. I want to get the wires and the grooves here. Okay, we'll try to get the hammer housing mounted. Okay, it's mounted. We'll insert the field. My glove is broken, maybe someone can repair it. Okay. And what we want to do now, we want to catch a couple of screws for the housing, a couple of screws for the motor housing, of course, and the hammer housing. Because all we want is to check if it's working yeah, have it here now I will screw a couple of screws for the, the hammer housing Inserted, and I think I have inserted the field. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I have the misalignment here for the field, so I need to release it again. need to tighten the housing a little bit
Okay, I'll put it back or I think I will hold it with a hand. And now we can try to test it. Yep, you can see that the tool is working. You can change the speed. Okay. So it's working. Yep. To the both directions. So what we can do now, we can disassemble it and clean it. Taking off the armature, taking off the fuse, okay, just taking everything out again. Disconnect this one because I want a uh, hammering part to get out. Okay, I'm really pissed with this Bosch chuck. This drill serves here a long time for me okay let's try to take the screws out you can see they are a little bit different the head is different it's like a corner Okay, so we've got the screws, the LED light is out. And we have our beloved hammer and housing, which need to be disassembled and maybe wash it a little bit. Yeah, it needs to be washed and greased. Probably we can check the bearing. This bearing is moving here. That's a very good sign for us. We have the rubber ceiling okay these gears we have the washer we have the pins for the gears you can see the pins fall out easily there is the one pin <laughs> I cannot see the third one oh, okay. it's here so we have all the hammer, we have of course dirt here and the bearing inside, so everything here needs to be washed. I will not assemble this hammer in part, you can press it, take the bolts out and you will take it out like that. But I will just wash this one, inspect the gears and regrease it. Okay, after cleaning, let's do it, let's assemble the hammer housing back and what I will do now, I think I need to put the rubber here, you can see a couple of grooves. bad the bearing is moving so what we have here we have the 
hammer itself, you can check if it's moving around, yep, this one is moving, and now I need to put some grease here, When the tool will work, this grease will be spirit on all over the tool. Okay, I'm going to put a gear here and not move the parts. found it. So repeating the step, inserting the gear, taking the pin out, pin, sorry, putting the pin in, and why I cannot get it. Try with another one and yeah, the gear hole must be aligned really well. Okay, now put this aside. What I want to do now, I want to put some grease on the housing itself. We have the housing and we have the gear, the anvil. We'll lubricate the anvil here a little bit. For the part here, I'm just dipping the anvil in the grease and putting the grease here. I think it will spread everything out. Okay, inserting into the housing. And now we have this gear, we'll put some grease on the gear here. Okay, what can we see now? We can see the groups for the gear. Insert the gear. Maybe it's some difference how it wants to be placed. Okay, got it in. We have the cover here. I think we can check if the anvil is spinning around. It's spinning around. That's good. Ok, 
Okay, let's check what we have here. I have cleaned this one a little bit. Of course, not got a very good result. It's, I don't know what did to this. Okay, we have our LED light, and you can see that we have the grooves for the LED light wires here. They must be aligned with the grooves here, or I believe so. We have aligned them. Now we can tighten the screws. I think this one's very good. I think this one's strong. Of course, you can use the tweed glues for this ones. Now we need to get all the wires and a switch back in a place. Don't forgetting to put all the wires in the gaps. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Especially when you want to show it on camera. the gap for the wire here can I manage the wires good And the black wire broke, so I need to repair it. And okay, I have covered the, I have soldered the wire and covered it with liquid electrical tape. I don't know; it's a good decision or not. Let me know what you think about it. And okay, getting back to assemble of this tool. changing button in a place okay you need to get the field installed correctly now this one looks good okay looks good looks good 
and you can see the housing after cleaning looks a little bit better uh, we have a lot of screws here don't forget about the long screws they go here to the bottom Okay, now just checking again for the gap. Looks good. So I will insert the armature. Double check for the gap. So maybe it needs to be tightened it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It seems good. Closing down. back of the drill now we are curious again if everything is moving it seems that everything is moving so getting the bigger bit for the hammer and housing screws Okay, what you want to do now, you want to test the corset. We have it working. The speed control is working and now we can put a socket and try half hammers. Cannot hold it with my hand, so it's good. Honestly, yeah. Okay, so that was a not very easy repair and maintenance of the Milwaukee Impact wrench. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to press thumbs up. For now, just bye.